and welcome to the Allison Bramlett podcast. Please like, share, rate, review. And I'm looking forward to just hanging out with you a little bit today and us having some heart-to-heart conversations and I hope not hurt-to-hurt. I've noticed in my life over the years, and maybe you've noticed this too, that sometimes we speak more from hurt than we do from a place of heart healing. And I am working personally to look into things and say, Lord, how can I add value to someone? How can I have your perspective on this person? How can I see myself, how you see me? And when I do those things, it allows my heart to be focused on eternity. I quit taking things personally, which if you know, I did write a book called Don't Take It Personally, (laughs) because I think the enemy comes to try to tell us that we're fighting against people puts us on the defensive with each other rather than us taking the offensive word of the God, destroying the works of the enemy, tearing down strongholds, and making it where we can communicate in a way that brings life, brings edification, brings encouragement, brings freedom, and brings direction. So I say all that, and then you're probably thinking, girl, you don't even know what my life looks like. And my mom told me many years ago, and actually I heard her say this story just today, That if we were all go to the altar and lay our problems down, because we think sometimes I'd rather have their life than mine, and look at it, and then look at everybody else's stuff, most of us would just pick up our stuff and go back home with it. Why? Because everybody has stuff, and we all have the unexpected, and we all have the the surprises, and we all have the things that, um, the gut punches is what I call them, or the things that you think, man, we're finally going to be over that, and then it hits us again. And I've just been asking myself, what do i really believe do i believe the word is true or do i believe my facts and my emotions is true i believe the word of god is true and that's what i'm going to go back to so i'm going to base my life on and it's what i want you to do so as we just talk a little bit today and you're listening to me i want you to know that i believe that god wants us to walk in complete freedom i love in galatians 5 1 it talks about this for this freedom christ has made you free don't be entangled again to those things the problem is is most of us get entangled There's always um, these moments where there's these opportunities and things going wrong and we have these obstacles and these oppositions. And I believe oppositions are opportunities for heaven to touch earth. It's most of the time the interruptions and the frustrations of life that you see Jesus' greatest miracles and transformations. So today, as you begin to take territory and do things for the kingdom and you're saying, I'm going to do this better Don't think there's not going to be a giant in your land. You know, in the promised land, you know, they walked in and when they got there, there were giants in the land. And a lot of times we'll think when we face an opposition that actually we've missed the will of God. And that's not the truth. I believe it's just a time for us to stand firm on the word, let the light shine through and us say, okay, I'm going to give this to you, Lord. I'm not going to let this moment stop me. This little moment, this breaking Point is going to be a breakthrough and not a breakdown and I believe we all have them I know that I do have them in my life just recently you know my husband and I we, we deal with stuff and go through things and we were talking and I said it's so amazing how a lot of times you can get rid of the big things in your life but you can still have those small or those old mindsets which I believe are like cobwebs in your brain and you may have killed the spider maybe you are not doing the thing that you always did and maybe th- but they're still this spider web and the way you process everything comes through that web and it gets caught in those emotions and those triggers and those things and anything that gets caught in a web guess what happens it doesn't make it it's going to die it's going to be stuck there it can't move forward and so i've really asked the lord in my own life holy spirit blow out the cobwebs i'm asking you by your word and so rather than me running um my thoughts and my attitudes and the things the facts that i see through the cobwebs of the hurts of my life the disappointments the unexpected the frustrations i have to decide to run all that through the word of god this is what it says in the word in hebrews i have to take these thoughts captive run them through the word and not run through the web and uh, most of us live on the web so much everything's webbed in us and so you really have to say okay holy spirit it's got to be about the word so there has to be a motivation that makes you want to live free it's one thing to say i want to be free it's no different than me saying I want to lose weight, but I still eat at McDonald's and I don't exercise anymore and I'm eating the same amount of Reese's Cups and I'm still drinking all the sodas and I can talk all day about the freedom I want, but really that's just an illusion until I put some action to it and put some doing to it. And for me, the way I, I have to say is what's one small thing I can do? Now, if I look at the whole picture and I think I want to lose 100 pounds and I want to do that 
quickly, if I set the 100 pounds as my goal, normally I'm never going to get there. But if I set two pounds as my goal, and 100 pounds is the end result, but I can do two pounds at a time, really it's a more way that I can live. I want to tell you today, if you um, have a bad attitude, there's things going on, if you will set small goals, small things that you can do and start today. Maybe with eating for me, I quit drinking soft drinks over a year ago. Felt like it was a step in the right direction. I'm feeling now like the Lord's saying, okay, let's do a little bit of something different. So I'm doing some different things. But it's being obedient to those little things that actually build up to be a great foundation. And so it's one brick at a time. So you have to have this motivation. If you want to have closer relationships, I would encourage you to be the friend first. Most people that live isolated um, have issues in their relationships have some things that go on, don't really know what they need to do, what's happening. Most of the time, they're not friendly in the beginning. Or either they've been hurt. And whether you like it or not, hurt paralyzes you. And then you talk about stuff that you can only be in the relationships you really feel like you can be in control of. Those are things I've had to work through in my own life. And I've had to say, how can I make a phone call, even if they don't call me back? Um, Showing up, maybe you have church hurt. Church hurt's a real thing. Um, you know why? Because it's just people. And you have to get over that and you have to realize they're human. And they're, they're going to make mistakes because Jesus is, is the real King of kings and the Lord of lords. And yes, even though I want you to be able to follow me as I follow the Lord, sometimes following me through McDonald's is not the right decision. So, you know, you got to say, okay, Holy Spirit, let me have um, some compassion. And, you know, a lot of times it's amazing to me, even like with church hurts or relationships with people, we will disappoint each other, frustrate each other. And I have been disappointed at a McDonald's or a Wendy's before. But guess what? I still go back for French fries. Shocking. They've messed up my orders. It's not been good before. Things have went wrong. I've actually had rude customer service. Maybe you've had these things. And I've still went back. But yet we'll let the enemy isolate us from right relationships, from our, from our spouses, from our children, from our close friends, and I believe from our church family, which I believe... Is what God says is so important that our marriages be worked on and that our friendships be worked on and that our church relationship be worked on because he compares the bride of Christ and the church. I mean, it's what his favorite thing is. God loves his church. He loves his body. So just letting you know, let's work on some emotional freedoms today. So for me, this is going to be like a real quick five minute quick podcast on this part of it today is um, what are some ways that I can live free? What are some basic things that I can do for a free life? Just recently, I looked in my backyard. We planted a garden. We've been out of town. We've not been able to take care of the weeds. We've not been able to do stuff. Now, the seeds are there. The, the fruit's there. The, the, what needs to be produced is there. The ground's even right. We've even watered it some. But because we've not weeded it and not been able to be there and put the time into it, it has been taken over by something, and it will not produce the harvest it's supposed to. Not because it doesn't have the right seed the word of God is always the right seed but it's up to you how you take care of the plot of land how you how you take care of the soul of your heart the soul of your emotions and what's going on in you and sometimes you got to pluck some stuff out and get rid of it and it is work and I even was looking the other night saw some bunnies and some deers in it and I was like, oh look how cute that is sometimes the sins that we are so comfortable with that are eating up our seed look cute to us because we we've liked them so long my mom always says you can't cast out a devil you like sleeping with and entertaining so there's some food for thought but let's talk about living free well you have to hear from God and so many times people say well I you know the spirit of the Lord is going to tell me even who to vote for the spirit of the Lord is going to tell me maybe even um, what I need to do in this position I'm telling you right now if it's not what the word of God says then it's not it has to line up with that because a lot of times your emotions and your own voice you'll confuse for the voice of the Lord because you want your will and your way I've done that myself. So when you hear from God, it will always line up with his word. Jesus was the word made flesh and dwelt among us. Um, The word of God is the only thing that's going to stand forever. It does not return void. So how do you hear from God? you got to get in the word of God. You've got to get in the scriptures. And you've got to study for yourself. Ask him. Look at those scriptures. And we do live in a time you can Google about anything. It'll pull up 40 scriptures on the topic you need to read and read all around it. Read the chapter at sea and read the chapter before it. Read the chapter at it. Get a good context of what God's saying to you. So how do you hear from God? I believe, first of all, it's through the Word. Then I also believe it's through right company. God wants us to be connected with faith family. 
But if someone's not telling you what the Word of God says, then they're not the right company for you. And I believe that the Lord shows you those things. And you have to, just because it's, it can even be someone really that you love, that you're close to, and you can be for them and they can be for you. But if they're not saying what God's Word says, you have to say, okay, we got to get the Word on this or we can't move forward. So you renew your mind, Romans 12, through the Word of God. And you start building this connection to the Lord. And I'm telling you, you will walk into situations and the Holy Spirit, that still small voice inside of you will say, this is how you live in freedom. This is how you don't. This is how you bring value to people. This is how you don't. This is how you love yourself like I love you. And this is how you don't. You can ask yourself, is this thought that I'm thinking a good thought? Is this thought that I'm thinking healthy for me, healthy for my family, healthy for my future, healthy for the kingdom of God? And really run it through that. And if it's not, then you've got to throw that thought out. You've got to get rid of it and say, you know what? That thought does not help me walk in freedom. That thought is not for my victory. That thought is not for value. It's not for love. So then what else do we do? I believe you have to choose to forgive. Um, For me, unforgiveness, and I have so many other teachings on it, and you can read my book. It goes more into it. But unforgiveness is a key to living the God life. It, it, you know, forgiveness is not a suggestion. It is actually a commandment, which frustrates me sometimes when I'm going through something that's hurtful. And I also want you to know that forgiveness does not always mean restoration. It just means forgiveness. I've had a lot of forgiveness and restoration in my life. I'm thankful for that. But just because you forgive someone does not mean that always your relationships are restored with them. There's different things and different types of boundaries. That's a whole other thing, too. But you've got to have a, something that goes on in your heart where you let the Word of God be the truth and that you can be untethered to that moment, to that situation, um, to that person, to that incident, and you can walk in freedom from it. And for me personally, I'll just share this. I've, I have fought depression off and on over my life at different times because of circumstances and situations i have been hit with depression before and had that web of depression come in my mind which really comes from anger and unforgiveness because a lot of times depression is when you're angry but you don't know where to put it you don't know how to express it there's no one that you can talk well you don't feel like there's anyone you can talk to the lord but you kind of get caught in the web of it and even then you think my life is always going to be like this i'm stuck like this and you fall into this pit of depression got to get me a sip of water talking about all that makes me nervous i guess but you have to have a motivation for eternity that keeps you going that says you can shower you can get up out of the bed you can be around people even when you think man that's a lot because you will quit living your life and it being about you and it'll be about him and when your life gets about jesus it changes things and for me i had to get rid of anger and unforgiveness and depression and I still have to do that daily. Um, sometimes it's much easier, but I will tell you there are triggers in our lives or there's incidents that come back up. And when something happens in your life too, you can't then base every bad thing that's happened before and like almost, um, I don't know, build it like, I guess like a Tetris game, you know, where you just keep stacking things up and there's no way you got to let that word come through and de- come in and put it in the right place so it can destroy all those things. So I believe for me, I have to choose to forgive and I believe when you begin to choose forgive, it says in Romans 2, 1, that which you condemn someone else to, you actually become. Man, that will scare you because that's where you'll look at yourself and think, man, I turned into my mama. Man, I turned into my dad. I never thought I'd be divorced like that. I never thought I'd be drinking like that. I never thought I'd be angry like that. I never thought I'd be showing out like that. And the reason why most of the time is we have not walked in forgiveness. And then a generational cursing pattern begins to happen in our lives. We get stuck in a cycle. But the blood of Jesus is greater. It's more than enough by renewing your mind. But you've got to start doing these things I'm talking about. Renew your mind. Get accountable to people. Share. It says in James that when we confess our faults, one another will be healed. Now, that's not like an open confession, just getting up, telling everybody all your stuff. But it's finding that safe person that believes the word of God, sharing with them, them putting the word on it, telling them who you really are and beginning to break those wrong generational mindsets. And So today, if you see that you're reproducing something in your life that you didn't like and maybe in your parents or someone that hurt you or things that have went on in your life, really want to encourage you. That's really from a root of bitterness, which is unforgiveness. That's normally either manifesting as extreme anger and depression, and it's just hurting you and everyone around you. I believe the Holy Spirit wants to break that today. 
but it comes from spending time with him, connecting with him in the word, connecting with him in prayer, and letting the Holy Spirit talk to you. And then I'll just tell you this. You begin to walk in authority, and you begin to maintain your freedom. Freedom is given by Jesus, but you have to work the maintenance program. And you go to that altar, or you cry out in your car right now, or if you're on your treadmill or whatever you're doing, say, Jesus, I need help. It's there. Freedom is there. But then you got to work the garden of it, and you got to keep the weeds out. you got to keep the little critters out. you got to keep the little things that come in that would steal all those things, and you've got to let the fruit of the Spirit, that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, that Galatians 5 fruit, that only the Holy Spirit can manifest, and you begin to grow. So I just want you to know I'm praying for you today. I believe that it's time to walk in great freedom. I believe it's time to stop the, the bad habits, break the generational curses, get the cobwebs out of your brain, let the Holy Spirit blow them out. And as I'm talking, I believe that the Holy Spirit right now, you know what you've dealt with. You know what the Holy Spirit, the Lord has been telling you, let's get rid of that. Don't hold on to that anymore so that we don't filter everything. And we don't have to be living from a place of hurt, but we can live from a place of healing. And so I believe hurting people hurt people, but I believe healed people heal people. And I'm calling you healed and whole today in the name of Jesus so that as you walk in freedom, you can help other people be free. Thanks and God bless.